Today we have a special guest speaker, Jeff Phillips. Can we give him a hand? I'm going to introduce Jeff, and then I'll ask him to come up. But uh, Jeff and Kathy Phillips met at William Jessup University, and a day after their first wedding anniversary, they left for a two-year commitment to be missionaries in Chile. And this initial two-year commitment has recently just passed 40 years. Let's give that, can we give them a hand? And it has resulted in 23 church plants in Latin America. God is good. And Jeff and Kathy have been our partners here at the home church for more than 16 years. They have four children who love the Lord and have eight precious grandchildren. Jeff received his master's in intercultural studies from Hope University and has taught at William Jessup University. One little known fact is that Jeff was solely responsible for getting the dress code instituted at William Jessup University. And you can ask him about that later, according to Doug. And uh, their sons, Gabe and Eric, and you remember them, Oceans of Grace, they've worshiped with us and led us in worship uh, several times, and we love them. They've, uh, they are also involved in ministry, and um, I would, uh, Jeff was telling me that they all live on the same property. Their families all live together uh, in Chile, and Jeff even now enjoys being coerced by them to play soccer and to surf and to wrestle with his boys, and Jeff and Kathy's passion is in reaching the least reached people in the world. Let's please give Jeff a warm welcome this morning. Thank you so much. It's great to be back here at, at Home Church. It's been a few years. Uh, our family sends greeting. Oceans of Grace sends greeting. They had a wonderful time here just, just recently, and so it's great for us to be back and, and be able to share in, in those areas as well. Um, I, I, I just heard that you guys finished up uh, what is... Um, uh, Christmas in August, where you bless all the missionaries with incredible gifts. Kathy loves you. <laughs> she, gets, she gets Amazon gift cards that last almost the entire year, and her Kindle is just full of precious books because of your guys' generosity. And so we love what you guys do for the missionaries. We live far away. We don't get all those special fringes. And so thank you so much for what you do for all the missionary families in that way. Today we're going to talk about journeys. You guys are on a journey. You've been on a journey for the last few years. And so as I began to pray about this, I began to think about these things. I thought about, you know, what is the process that you're all experiencing what is the journey that God has for you as well? Uh, and we're, we're going to talk about Moses and the journey that he went through. Now, he had an incredible journey, this man, what he lived through. And, and as, as home church experiences this period of transformation, this period of, of, of journey, I, I hope the Lord encourages you and speaks into the church as a re result of what we learned from Moses' journey as well. One thing that encourages me, not just about Moses, but encourages me as well about where God is taking us as a people is God has been relentlessly seeking after his creation since the Garden of Eden. When that relationship was broken, from that day forward, he has been in a process of seeking us and restoring this relationship. And, and what takes place in our lives and what has taken place in the lives of Moses is, is so important. Um, and what's so great is, is how God pursues us in the same way that he pursues, pursued Moses. This is not just a one-time experience that happened to Moses. It happens to all of us. And it all comes down to an incredible relationship that we experience with our God, with our Creator, and what He desires for us. And so I want to encourage you, and, and, and I pray that it's your heart's desire as well, as we talk today about the process with Moses, 
as we talk about our process as well, that we'll just become more and more aware of what God desires to do at home church, what God desires to do in each and every one of our lives, and seeing how God is just desiring to perfect in us his perfect will, and how that process is so important for each and every one of us to discover in this process as well. When we look at, we look at Moses, we see how this man was protected and pursued and transformed in a journey that took many, many years. We look at him, and, he, and, and first of all, he starts out as a baby that was rescued, right? I mean, this, he had a death sentence on him. And so he's, he's sent off in a little boat, and, and he ends up being adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter. He becomes a prince. There's something that probably wasn't expected initially in the process of, of, of what Moses' parents even thought about. And then from one day to another, he's, he's in this position of authority, and he sees an Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew, and he kills him. And when this is finally discovered, Pharaoh wants to have him killed, so he has to flee. So we now have a prince that has all of a sudden become nothing again. He was rescued from the waters. He becomes a prince. He then becomes an assassin. And now all of a sudden we find a Pharaoh or a, a Moses that had been a prince. He was all, all of a sudden a refugee. And we know what refugees are about nowadays. We have so many people that are living in a situation as refugees. Kathy and I spend at least two trips a year in northern Iraq, in Kurdistan, where thousands and thousands of, of refugees are flooding into our cities the, from Syria, from Baghdad, and the Yazidis, uh, a people group. And, and we see the reality of, of what these people had at one time, a very secure people. And all of a sudden, they're living in abandoned buildings for the last two years. They're living in tents for the last two years. And, and, and everything has changed for them. Kathy, Kathy loves especially the Yazidis. They, I, th I think they're part gypsy. They, you know, and when, when she walked up one day and she looked at, looked at these precious children, they look a lot like our grandchildren. Blonde hair, blue eyes, green eyes, uh, shoes on backwards, Kathy said, just like our grandchildren. <laughs> and it just broke her heart to say, from one day to the other, people are refugees. People have nothing and don't know if they'll ever return to their, their homes. And this is the process that God was taking Moses through as well as he dealt with this in, entire process of from being a prince to being a broken refugee, to being in a dry and alien land where he had no idea what would take place. Yeah. Being displaced, being stuck, being empty, and not having anything. And I believe, if we look at Moses, I believe that we can talk about our own spiritual journeys at times, in our own lives. We've had some incredible times in our lives, at least I have, but then there's been some incredible times where not everything has gone perfectly. And we find ourselves displaced from what we thought everything was, how we had it all planned. Have you ever had plans and you just knew how God was going to do it and then he didn't? And so all of a sudden you become a displaced person even spiritually at times. And you see that journey that has to take place and how God wants to deal with us. And, and, and you begin to say, you know, what is God doing to us? What is God doing for us? And what is God doing with us? And what does this process mean for our lives? And, and you come into a point of, of discovering relationship. And you come into a point of discovering what transformation means in our, in our lives and how that takes place. Um, Exodus 3 and 4 talk about this whole process that, that God had with, with Moses um, and how he begins to work in his life in, in such a new way. Uh, and the incredible thing is, even when, 
when God starts looking for Moses, he didn't want anything to do with him. He basically ignored him for a period of time. I mean, even the burning bush didn't do it, really, for Moses. He, he, he had an encounter with God, but true transformation didn't take place in that initial encounter with God. It was a, it was a period of time that, that, that took place in his life. He was utterly separated from God. He was utterly apart from God. But call, God calls him to a purpose. And, and we can see this in, in Exodus 3. Let's see if I can get this work out. There we go. I think, yeah. 3.11, it says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God had already called him for a specific person, a specific purpose, but out of the blue, we see Moses, as we do many times, questioning, but, but who am I? And, and I confess I've done that many times in my life as well. I didn't grow up in the church. I grew up with alcoholic parents. I almost destroyed my life by 15 years of age through drugs. And then God intervened uh, through an invitation. Uh, God provides invitations in our lives. And my invitation was from my grandmother who set me up. It was Mother's Day. And she goes, Jeff, I want a Mother's Day present. And I was thinking flowers, and I was thinking chocolates, and I go, whatever you want. And she gives this grandmother smile, you know, gotcha. And she goes, I want you to go to church. And I went, oh, no. How could this be happening to me? Because I was really messed up. And I thought, if I walk into a church building, God will kill me. He ended up not killing me, and that was a journey that began a whole process in my life that has now come to being a servant him for the last 40 years in Chile. But you watch how God begins to work in our lives, and we, you see what he continues saying to Moses in, in, in verse chapter 4, verse 1. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me? And say, the Lord did not appear to you. Again, this whole questioning of what God is doing in our life. And, and I haven't had a chance to, to talk with Pastor Hector, but I'm going, there might have been some of this going on in his life. I mean, he's a lawyer. I mean, he's a businessman. And all of a sudden, God is calling him into ministry. And so we all have to process these different things. There might even be church members going, I don't know, this guy's a lawyer. <laughs> Can you trust lawyers, you know? <laughs> Somebody just said, you can't, so be careful. <laughs> but again, you know, what if they say, you know, you weren't sent by God. And, and so the Lord even gave him some incredible signs. Remember, you throw down that stick in the turns into a serpent. Put your hand inside your cloak and pulls it out, and it's leprosy. Or say He, he gave incredible signs to them, but there were still doubts that were, were taking place in his life. Um, and God gives us signs today, too. He gives us ways of communicating that the presence of God is with us in incredible ways. And... and this may sound very superficial as far as science, but I'm convinced that one of the greatest signs the church has today is the love of God in our lives. Nobody can argue with seeing the love of God in our lives. Uh, look what, look what, this is a, a verse that just drives my life. It just drives my life. 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. Do you remember that time in your life when you finally figured it out that God loves you, no matter how messed up you are, and how God begins that process, and then we become 
that agent of love to touch other people's lives. I have been in 39 different countries. I've spent most of my life in Latin America, but now I'm spending more and more time in the Middle East. And one time I was talking about this whole process about we lived in Chile, I fell in love with the people, we went to Ecuador, I fell in love with the people, I was in Peru and I fell in love with people, then I was in Morocco and I fell in love with the people, and then I was in... And afterwards, I hadn't realized that I'd said this. And so, in the end he goes, somebody comes up to me and said, I, now I understand why God uses you. And I go, what? He goes, don't you listen to your own messages? Rarely. He goes, you fall in love with people. You said every country you've been in, you fall in love with people. People know when you fall in love with them. They know that you're desperately in love with these people and you want them to know the grace of God and the goodness of God. And so we become those, that agent of love that shows that we're his disciples, that shows that there's a living God, that there's a love, if God can love us and we can love God through other people, obviously he can love all nations as well. So we learn to walk in his presence. And one of, one of those aspects of his presence is just allowing that love to flow through us in such, in such a special way. Yeah. But even with all of those signs, the ones Moses has, the signs that God has given us as well, there's still fear. There's still that questioning of, of rejection. Will they believe me? Will this really take place? As I walk into some of these closed countries, I go, are people really going to understand what we're all about? And in, in Exodus 4.10, Moses says to the Lord, pardon your servant. Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken <laughs> to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Again, we, there's these moments of crisis in our lives when God wants to use us, when God is calling us as individuals, when God is calling us as a church, to what he wants to take place as we follow him in obedience and as we follow him in faith. And so as we begin to think about these things, you know, again, we go, but, but look who you have chosen. And believe me, if somebody would have told me 45 years ago that I would be a public speaker and that I would be traveling all over the world, I would say, that must be a different Jeff Phillips. I was scared to death of saying anything. When I first came into the kingdom and the youth pastor would say, let's see, who, who would like to pray? I would pray to God, if you love me, God, make me invisible. <laughs> May no one ever call on me to say anything publicly. But then God takes you in a process and transformation takes place by his grace and by his patience patience with us and we began to grow and we began to experience many things and transformation takes place. I love the church. I love church services. I love worship. But one thing does concern me. We can listen to hundreds of sermons. We can listen to thousands of sermons and not experience transformation. Relationship is much more than just being here on Sunday. It's much more than just listening to, to sermons. And that's one of the things that I'm going to challenge home church with today, is how does transformation take place? How does relationship take place? How, how do we come to know God in a more and more personal way? This week, I've been invited to offer several classes during the week, on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and on Saturday all morning up until 2.45. And it's about this whole process of transformation. 
It's about the whole process of listening to God and, and understanding how God is working in our lives. And so uh, it's open. You know, you, ha- you need to sign up. But I just, I know every one of us desires a closer walk with God. I know every one of us wants to hear God's voice in, in a much closer way. Some of these songs today, to see your face, to touch you, these take place through more than just a Sunday service. It's about a relationship that we develop with God. In Exodus 4, 11 and 12, it says, Lord, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. An amazing thing happens in a relatively short amount of time. We have a Moses that wanted nothing to do with him, nothing to do with God, even after the burning bush. And then there's signs and miracles to prove what, that God is with him. And then all of a sudden, within... Nine to 12 months, we see how God begins to create incredible things for God to transform Moses when he begins to understand the presence of God with him, when he begins to understand the glory of God and what that means to him as a servant of God and, and, and what the ways of God are all about. So now we fast forward to Exodus 33, verse 9. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Now we have a dialogue taking place. Now we have an incredible amount of time. It says when the cloud would come down and appear before the tent, all of Israel would worship and pray because they knew that God and Moses were talking together. And so what a transformation that took place in this man that knew nothing of God to being a man that spoke face to face with God in an incredible process that took place. And and then comes this declaration that is amazing in Exodus 33. 13, if you are pleased with me, teach you your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your, is your people, if you are pleased. And, and this is one of the things as I've developed and walked into a relationship with God is desiring to please God but also to feel his pleasure. You know those moments in life when you feel his pleasure? Do you remember the movie Chariots of Fire? Excellent movie. It's been out a long time. But there is a runner, Eric Little. And in one moment, when people are just asking, why are you so dedicated to running? Why are you so crazy? And his response was, God made me to run fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Beautiful. And, and, and again, isn't that what we desire as followers of Christ? To come into a relationship that we know what we were created for? And when we walk in that obedience and we allow his will to be done in our lives, we feel his pleasure. Have you felt his pleasure? That is one of my desires that home church more and more will begin to feel his pleasure as they discover his good and perfect will for each one of you. I have found pleasure to not always be the easiest road in life. Usually pleasure in my life in my circumstances, 
I have been in situations where I go, what in the world am I doing here? How in the world did I get into this situation? And there's been situations where I've been on my knees saying, I'm not sure about this anymore. And God will come alongside and say, you are in the exact situation you need to be. And I am pleased with you. And it's in situations of crisis where faith is called to help us move along and where we're walking in utter obedience based solely on faith. And so this is what I'd love for you to experience as well in, in these days that we're going to be uh, learning together. How do we find God's pleasure? How do we learn to walk together with, with God and feel his pleasure? Believe me, it's a lot more than head knowledge. I mean, look at Moses. He sat with princes. I mean, he was a prince. He sat with the greatest educators in Egyptian time, but never had experienced the pleasure of God, had never come to know the one true God. So it's much more than just a head nod knowledge experience. Many evangelical churches have been trained. I was trained. I have a degree in theology. How to dominate the word of God. I know all about homiletics. I know about exegesis. I know about word studies. What the evangelical church has been poor in doing is allowing the word of God to dominate us. You understand the difference? We have been trained to dominate the word, to dissect the word. And we need to allow the word of God to do that to our hearts, to do that to our minds, and to do that to our souls. That's the process that I invite you to begin this week if God leads you in that area. So some of the ways that we hear God's voices are, are through terms that I think the evangelical church throughout, you know, when they talk about throwing out the baby with the bathwater, I think that the church did that, unfortunately. There are some ancient pathways. There are some ancient ways to hear God's voice, like Lectio Divina, Examen, Illumination instead of Revelation. These are processes and pathways that I'm convinced God wants to put once again in our lives to be able to feel his pleasure, to be able to sense his direction for our lives to help us walk more and more in obedience. So as Moses' relationship grew, his desires grew as well, incredibly. Again, a man who wanted nothing to do with God ends up saying in Exodus 33, verse 15, Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? So we find a Moses now that doesn't want to take a half a step outside of God's presence. He wasn't even aware of God's presence up until a certain time. And now he's saying, I'm not going anywhere without you. And that's, that's been my cry more and more in my life. I'm not going one step anywhere without your presence. Because that's what I desire for people to see, not Jeff Phillips. The presence of God. That they may see Jesus and what Jesus has been able to do in a broken and destroyed life. He just soaked up everything. One of, one of my mentors said, you know, Jeff, we, we need to be like sponges in the presence of God, that we just soak up more and more of his presence. And so, yeah, you've seen a 
sponge that's full, right? You pick it out of the bucket and it just leaks everywhere. You know, you, you can't even squeeze it or you, it just water flies everywhere. I think that's what God desires from us. And, and, and we've been conformed with being maybe damp Christians, you know, instead of just full to a point of anyone who touches us feels the presence of God. And that comes through relationship, not through head knowledge. It comes with spending time with God and knowing God. And, and, and what we absorb, there's so much stuff to absorb in this world today. We can absorb so many toxic things, physically and spiritually, or we can absorb God in such a precious way as, as, as well. Let's go on to verse 33. I mean, chapter 33, verse 19. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I'm convinced that these verses is what God has decided for his church to fill us with mercy, to fill us with compassion, to walk alongside of him. If he, if he can have mercy on us, if he can have compassion on us, he wants that same thing to take place in the church so that we, we just pour out his grace upon hurting people. We pour out his mercy upon people that were as destroyed as I was and to find salvation to find healing and to find direction in his life, in our lives this wasn't to de demonstrate how far along moses came he was a great man initially ended up being an abandoned refugee and then god began to work with him but what moses desired was that god walk with him always what Moses desired was that that presence would be the most evident thing so that no one would ever question why he is doing what he is doing. And I think that's true with the church as well. That his presence be so evident in our lives that no one, no one would question. And just to, just to finish, this is, this is my desire and my prayer for home church. Ephesians 1.17. I keep asking that God, that the God of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. May you know him better through the wisdom that comes through relationship of walking together with him. And as you walk with him, may he reveal to each member and to the leadership of this church his good and perfect will for the glory of the Father. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity to share with these precious people. We've walked together for 16 years. And Father God, now they're in a new transition. They're in a new process. May you walk together with these precious people. May your spirit of wisdom, may your spirit of revelation move among this church, move among this leadership to, com to complete the perfect will that you have for this precious body. And may you always receive all the glory. And may everyone who visits this church see that your presence is evident. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you.